We're here on AIEMCA 2 with uh, Alexander Craven and Laura Jenkins and David Reynolds this time talking about uh, the special challenges involved in doing um, ethnomethodology and conversation analysis as a PhD topic and all of the pretty little bits that go on with that. Um, starting off with uh, the problems with formulating research questions. Um, we'll do what this is around Robert. So starting with Laura, um, what, what did you find um, starting off with your, your research questions and the difficulty fitting that into the institutional frame of forms and such? Well, I think one of the challenges is that when you're doing CA, you start with the data. It's very inductive. So when you are trying to give a broad framework for your research, um, starting with questions, specific questions, isn't necessarily a helpful way to go. But sometimes um, in the institution you work in, they expect you to have questions when you're writing a report. So um, there can be a bit of conflict or tension between those. Um, I guess the very first point where it's a problem is the very the research proposal, the first bit to apply to do a PhD, because there is that box, you know, what's your research question? And I guess we're kind of lucky at Loughborough that the proposal were being looked at and decided on by a CA group of people, so they did understand that the research question that we put down to fit with what the institution wanted, they expect us to ignore it when we actually came in. And I was actively told that, so I just put a research question down so there's something on the form and then just start your research and pretend you haven't put it there. Mm. And I thought that that instantly sort of lit up that what the department wants and expects as a CA department is different to what the university expects. And in some way I think the department kind of buffers us against that when it can, and sort of saying it's okay, it's CA, don't worry. Um, but then when you actually have to deal direct with people outside the department, they just, they don't get it. How, how is that? Using sort of general terms, how's that come up for you? Uh, training courses, um, because they're run by the university rather than by the department. So you're in a room with people from engineering and biology, um, and then that's sort of the people running the staff development courses will be trying to sort of hone in on what your research question is and what you're looking at. And um, you sort of, in, in some ways, I think once you say you don't have a research question, then you get the question of what stage of your PhD are you at? And it's, and if it's anything other, if your answer is anything other than right at the very start, then you, they just kind of give you this glazed look as though you don't stand a chance of ever finishing if you haven't got a research question at the start. But of course that's not true. No, and I think you'd struggle to do proper CA if you did have something you desperately wanted to find out at the start. Because if you had data that didn't have it in there, then you wouldn't get the answer. I know that I just turned my, my research question around on its head. I think my, uh, my supervisor wasn't necessarily expecting me to, he didn't say to ignore it, <laughs> but I think that there was no surprise when, when it turned um, at the one year stage from, from one, one thing into something else and that it's going to turn into something else again yeah. later on. It's a, be something that you retrofit onto that, that little bit yeah, in, the, in, the, in the thesis that doesn't really even yeah. need to go there. Um, you, you guys mentioned the literature reviews and how that, that fits into the process. I know that we're um, expected to have a literature review early up and I resisted that myself. Mm -hmm. um, how have you guys come across that? Certainly the university as a whole expects you to spend your first year doing a literature review. Um, and that doesn't fit at all with the new model. Yeah, if you say for, for the benefit. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that doesn't... Um, the CA approach is you start with data, and once you've got your data and you've got sort of findings and you're starting to see interesting things, then you can go to the literature and look for links or sort of bits to refine your search, that kind of thing. So it should happen a lot later on. Yeah, in terms of writing it up, the kind of interacting with the literature happens on a very ongoing basis, I think. Mm -hmm. But in terms of crystallising, the parts of the literature that are significant in building up the story. I think it happens a lot later on. I didn't. I found that when we came to write our end of year report in the first year, there wasn't necessarily a pressure. It might. It might be a general expectation, but I think there was a flexibility to produce something that showed that you're progressing. Um, and so for us, that worked well to produce bits of data uh, and start 
to put together some analytical findings and it wasn't, um, no, it wasn't too loud for us. Although I do think that's perhaps a feature of the, of the fact that we have a CA department mm -hmm. and progression was entirely decided on by people within the department. Um, you know, if you were talking a couple of CA people in a psychology department and your progression depended on convincing a quantitative psychologist that you've done what you needed to do, I think we might have faced more of a problem trying to get through without having a fully formed mm. literature review. It ties in with what we were talking about, research questions mm. and expectations in terms of being able to ground and justify what you're going to look for and what you expect to find out, mm -hmm. which would be the more uh, traditional approach um, versus being much more exploratory and doing literature as you go. That's that I found it really awkward because we did presentations as part of our first year mm -hmm. and quite awkward being the only one that didn't have um, literature reviews mm -hmm. and right. frameworks and stuff. I started my presentation saying you're not going to get this today. <laughs> this, is, this is what you're not going to see. This, yeah. Is what you will. Um, yeah. Certainly if you're using sort of people in the year ahead of you as a model for what you need to have done at that mm -hmm. stage, then they're there because I remember we had a postgrad conference that they run each year and sort of like the second year's presents. And they were all presenting their literature reviews and their research questions and their hypothesis, all of that fully formed. And trying to then think what we would do when we were presenting at, at that particular stage. It, you don't have that model mm. that people that are doing research within a more traditional framework would have. And then you could look and you could see, well, mm. this is how they've done it. For the yeah, what does, a, what does a half-formed CA project yeah. look like? You know, where should you be at at different stages? Yeah. We have postgraduates in your own department who are doing CA who um, can give you a flavour of that, I think. Yeah. But that's why we're here. Yeah, yeah, you're very lucky here with that. Yeah. yeah. But even we would sort of panic and not know if we were at the right point or if we'd done enough because you just you don't have anything to compare it to. And there is no one, certainly outside the department or in wider academia, that can say, oh yes, at this point you should have done this, this, this and this. Because the pace of CA is so data driven mm -hmm. that you could have two people in exactly the same office a year into their PhD, one who has um, essentially the skeleton of a chapter ready to be written because they happen to have found something that's crystallised into a paper, and someone else who's still working around with all the different areas of it and trying to pull something out.